Hi guys, Palabo here, and here's another flashback episode. It's episodes that you might have missed that I'm putting out while I'm working on the next season of the Radio Vagabond from the US, Canada, and Mexico. We start season six in the beginning of March. Before we kick off this flashback, I would like you to think about sending me an email on listener at the radiovagabond.com. You can go to the radiovagabond.com and click on contact and fill out the form, or you can click on the banner where it says talk to me. Then you can send a small voice clip that I can use on the show. And tell me where you are and what you're doing while you're listening to these episodes, maybe what's in it for you to listen or what you'd like me to cover more in upcoming episodes, anything you want to say. It's always so great to hear who's on the other side of this. Okay, in this flashback, we're going to Pest and Buddha. Yeah, we're going to Buddha and Pest. It's in Hungary and episode number five. It's recorded in August 2016. Welcome to Budapest. Hello. Pelle. Yeah, Pelle. That's my name. Pelle. Yeah. How do you spell it? P A L L E. So Pelle. Pelle. Ah, oh, in it's Hungarian, Pelle. it's Pelle. Yeah. Pelle. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Pelle Bo. Pelle? Yeah, Pelle. Pelle. Bo, that's a Danish name. Uh, I think my parents really should have chosen a, a name that would be more easy to say in English. Pelle. 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 And let's start everything from the beginning. First of all, you have to know the proper name of the city. Do you know where are you now? You have to know you are not in Budapest, neither in Bucharest, because that one is another capital, but it's called Budapest. Right now, we are on the flat Pest side of the city, and this is not the Pest side. Pest means a horrible disease, okay? So give it a try, Budapest. Budapest. Music to my ears, thank you very much. I've arrived to Budapest. Budapest. Oh, sorry, Budapest the capital of Hungary. I came here with a door-to-door -door minibus. It picked me up in Belgrade and drove me straight to the door here at my Airbnb in Budapest. Budapest is two parts, Buda and Pest, and uh, I live in the Buda side, the flat side. Buda and Pest on each side of the Danube River. I live in the Jewish quarter, and I really like it here. I have a very nice, roomy Airbnb on the sixth floor, and it's around 100 meters from the famous Simpla Bar. If you haven't heard of it, it's a bar, or rather more bars, in, in, a, in a backyard, and everything looks sort of like a ruin, but in a good way. They take pride in making it look old and used, and they put different strange, crazy things on the walls and on the ceiling, and uh, it's uh, an amazing place and it's so crowded at night any night also it's the first of the countries in, in, in this part of Europe that I've been traveling to that is filled up with tourists and I can totally understand why because it's pretty easy to, to get here from most of Europe and it's cheap and there's a lot of stuff to do also I've learned that it's the home of Rubik's he lives in a big mansion on the Buddha side, I was told. Oh, Rubik's. He's the one who invented the Rubik's Cube and made a lot of money from it. Also, I hear that Franz Liszt is from here, Sasa Gabor, and Houdini was born here. Also, it's the place of, I think, five or six Michelin restaurants. And unlike most other places, you can actually get an affordable meal in a Michelin restaurant here in Budapest. I've been to one and it was amazing. Pelle, Pelle, Pelle. This is the thing about my name. The Hungarian language is different. Unlike anything I've heard. And of course they have a difficulty understanding other languages as well. Like my name. I went to an outdoor fast food joint and uh, ordered a burger. And they asked for my name. And I said, Pelle? It's, it's a bit like Pelé, you know, the football player. Pelé. Okay. 
and they wrote it down and uh, after 15 minutes they they called out a name that sounded sort of like my name so i went up and said well my name is pella and then they said oh i got your order here and then they started uh, putting six or seven burgers into a bag and I said no I don't think that's for me anyway and at the same time they called out Philip Philip yeah that was not me so I sat down again and kept on waiting and as I was waiting all the time he was calling Philip <laughs> very very loud and uh, I didn't react and after 20 minutes I went up and said what's happening to my order I ordered this chili burger oh I called your name many times he said almost angry uh, no you said Philip my name is Pella yeah I called your name Philip but that's not my name <laughs> so he gave me my burger that's been waiting for 20 minutes The next time I came back, I thought, oh, I, I'll give him an, an easy one. So I said, my name is Bo, B-O. And then he wrote down P-I-O. <sighs> so I was waiting for them to call P-O, P-O. <sighs> that was the last time I went to that burger joint. The next time I came back, I went across the street to another one. And when he asked for my name, I said, Bo. Very, very clearly. So he wrote B O, and I said, Yeah, it's there. Oh. So he, he wrote Boo. <sighs> so I've decided next time anyone in a fast food joint asks for my name, I'll just say, Philip! Oh man, what a Thursday. I came yesterday and I've had computer problems. I had some problems with my MacBook Pro like four weeks ago when I was in Latvia and I managed to find a guy who could fix it, but now it's back. It came back when I was in Belgrade last week and uh, I went to a, a Mac support center and they tested it and they couldn't find anything wrong with it. So the first thing I did when I got here to Budapest was I went to another Mac store and I was sort of realizing that I needed to buy a new one. I didn't want to. I was happy with my five-year-old MacBook Pro 17-inch screen and uh, it's been like a loyal friend to me up until Latvia. And actually, just before I left and my guy, I upgraded it with one terabyte hard disk and uh, some new RAM and, and I was sort of ex expecting it to, to live on for a few years. But no, when you're a digital nomad like I am, I am so dependent on having a computer that works. So I so, sort of realized that I needed to buy a new one. I've got deadlines coming closer and closer and I really, really need to work now. They, they did have a support department and I went in with my old MacBook and, uh, and he actually said, well, if it's what I think it is, it's a well-known Mac Aero with the, the, the motherboard and uh, if it's what I think it is, I can fix it for free. So I gave him my old MacBook and uh, said, well, go ahead. I, I think I have tested uh, the serial number and found out that it's not a part of that uh, error. So I gave it to him anyway, but I bought a new one with a Hungarian keyboard. Well, now I'm, I'm, I'm back at the apartment and my Thursday horror continued because I got home with the, the computer and uh, I thought now I am going to work. I can finally get on Pro Tools, uh, my audio software and do some work. But no, because this is a new Mac, my Pro Tools 10 didn't run on the new Mac, so I had to upgrade. That cost me around 340 euros extra. And then I thought, now I'm gonna work. But no. And I couldn't figure out what the hell was going on. So I called the English support guy, Dan, Dan the man. He was sitting in Birmingham in England, and he took control of my computer and figure out that, oh, you need a new iLock. 
iLock is sort of a USB thingy that uh, has to be plugged in whenever you run Pro Tools in order to make sure that it's a legal software. And I had my iLock in, but he said, no, 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 you need a new iLock. You need an iLock 2. And I thought, oh my God, now it's going to be sent from the UK or the States and I can't get to work for another week anyway, even though I, I bought this new computer. So he could hear the panic in my voice. So he said, oh, don't worry, don't worry. Uh, we have a supplier in, in Budapest and um, uh, I'm sure that they have one. It was around 10 kilometers away from, from, from this apartment. So I called him and he said, yeah, we have it. We have a lot of them. Uh, you can get it on Monday. And like I said, it's Thursday. Uh, and I couldn't wait till Monday. I said, oh, come on. It's just an Isla. Can't I go and get one? And he said, nope. But we we do sell them to a music shop in, in town. And I'm sure they have one. And he told me what it was called. And he I could see that it was 300 meters away from where I live. And he said, yeah, but you better hurry. They close for the day in 15 minutes. So I hung up the phone and ran to the music store. And he said, no, I just sold the last one yesterday. And, and I said, okay, can't you call this guy and pull some strings and uh, try to get it? And he said, yeah, I'll try. And he spoke to him and got the same response. No, you can come on Monday. At that point, I was almost ready to lie flat down on the floor in this music shop. And he could see the panic in my eyes. And I said to him, even though if I, if I have to get on a plane and fly to another country, I need it now or tomorrow morning. I, I really need to work. And he said, okay, okay, I'll call my competitor. And, and he called another music shop. And yeah, they had it. And he said, well, this, it's uh, three kilometers away, so you better hurry. They close the shop in 20 minutes. And I was getting ready to run again in the heat here in Budapest. And he said, no, don't do that. Uh, g get on the bus. It's right around the corner and it's four stops and you're almost there. So I ran to the bus stop and got on the bus without a ticket because I didn't know if I should buy it in a, in a special shop or anything so I sneaked in please don't tell the Hungarian bus company that I did that but I rode the four stops and, and got to the music shop and got it and now I'm back home getting ready to work finally and I could open Pro Tools and everything is good well almost because now I see that I'm missing a lot of plugins uh, into the software in order to do the the, the, the finalizing of, of my my shows and my radio commercials and whatever I do. So now I, I need to go out and, and buy a, an upgrade to the, the, the plugins as well because they don't run on this software. So yeah, the whole... Thing about my new computer is not as happy as could be. So now I have my rental car and I'm off on a road trip, a, a day's road trip. Pretty nice car and uh, just switch on the radio and off we go. And oh, have a listen. They're playing Danish music. Oh, Danish music in Hungary, that's nice. I'm on my way back with the, the, the rental car and uh, I've had a fantastic day driving uh, in the countryside of uh, Hungary. I went to this lake called Balaton. It's, as far as I know, the biggest lake here in Hungary. It was my Airbnb host that uh, recommended me to, to go there and uh, it was beautiful. It was really in the countryside, little hilly some some small mountains around uh, and 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 very beautiful area and it's sort of an area where uh, a lot of the people from budapest it's budapest sorry budapest they go for a summer vacation and uh, a weekend away from uh, from the city and i can uh, totally understand why it's it's beautiful uh, in the middle of the lake there's a, a small ferry that uh, took me across to the other side and then i, I drove back uh, from there well in fact i didn't drive quite back i went to this restaurant in the northern part of buda that was recommended to me and 
it was very Hungarian style. So of course I went in to uh, to get some goulash, some Hungarian goulash. And what we uh, think is goulash is not what it is here. Goulash is not a stew, it's a soup. But a very nice soup, very Hungarian goulash soup. And uh, and it was very nice and, and very authentic. And, and, and when I left the place, I saw that they were actually, I think, five or six years in a row recommended by Michelin. So it was good and, and very authentic. Budapest. Oh, sorry. Buda, Budapest. Budapest. Yeah, now it's Tuesday. And I just wanted to give you an update on my computer because there's a new development. I got a text message from the computer store. You know, the ones that I bought the new computer in and the ones that took in my old computer and uh, said that they might be able to fix it. I got the text in Hungarian, but I managed to find out that it said, we're finished working on your computer, please come get it. So I strolled up there waiting for them to tell me that, well, it wasn't what we thought and uh, sorry, you might as well uh, throw this in the trash. But he said, yeah, I fixed it. It was what I thought. Here it is, and it's free. Come again? I fixed your computer. It was the motherboard. I put in a new motherboard, and it's completely free because this well-known Mac era. So I replaced the motherboard. It's working. So now I have two computers. I have my brand-new uh, computer with a Hungarian keyboard, and I got my old computer from 2011, five-year-old, and um, I recently I got the new hard drive in, I got the new RAM in, and now I have the new motherboard. So basically, it's a new computer. I went from having no computer to having two computers. <laughs> Anyone want to buy a computer with a Hungarian keyboard or a Danish keyboard? Please let me know. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, Pelle, please, I told you. It's Budapest. I'm at the House of Terror. I'm just uh, standing in line to, to get into the exhibition. And there's a screen with a 60, 65-year-old man who's just crying and crying. It's in black and white, and he says to the interviewer, you got to forgive. Uh, the interviewer says, no, this you can't forgive. But one has to forgive, no? And he's shaking his head and crying. Those many, many people who were hanged. And why? Why? Why did they have to do it? 16, 18-year-old young kids whose thinking was different and they were sent to the hangman, the executioner. This was their socialism. The guy is sobbing and this is just uh, part of what sets this spirit for the exhibition that I'm going to see now. Okay, let's go inside. Now I've been through the exhibition here at the House of Terror in, in, in Budapest uh, and uh, it's frightening the stuff that's been going on in this, in this building and in, in Hungary's hi history in general. Well, they made some poor choices in the, in the history of, of this country. Uh, for instance, they were on the Nazi side, they were on the Soviet sides and, uh, and that r really were just oppressors. They thought that the Soviet Union was going to liberate them from the Nazis and, well, it was actually the other way around. Uh, they were almost just as brutal uh, as the Nazis were. In this building, uh, where they have this, this museum, the House of Terror, had stuff has been going on in the basement. That was sort of like the, uh, the, the, the prison of the building and, uh, and it, uh, it contained some really gruesome history it's not been that 
uplifting the last few hours, but definitely worth a visit if you're here in, in Budapest. You need to you need to go to the House of Terror, and it's it's right here on the Pest side and uh, close to uh, to the city center. So go there if you're here. Yesterday I went on one of those free walking tours. They're, they're, they're all, all over the place. I've already been to one in Sofia and in Belgrade. And, and yesterday I went for, for one here in, the, in, in Budapest. And then when, when I got there, there were like, uh, I think there were, maybe we were 250 people just showing up where they did this free walking tour. It's really big here in, in Budapest. So we were divided into... Uh, to five groups and uh, I went along with uh, a, a very very talented uh, young man called uh, Sultar Zoltan S- Sultan and after the tour I, I, I sat down with a guy Sultan now you've been interrupting me this whole time <laughs> <laughs> let me just find who is this voice who's correcting me you're a tour guide I am I am a Hungarian tour guide from Budapest yeah. Yep. Yeah, as, yeah. as you know from yeah, Budapest. Yeah, now I know. Now I know. How come that we can't say it? It's, it's there's, a, there's a thing with an S when it's alone. It's Z. Oh, if like, there is, is an that, S is that, is that alone as an S in Hungarian, ash. and the S and Z together is an S. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's, it's weird. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of weird. But I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm doing yep. the best I can. Okay. Yeah. It would be hard because. <laughs> Let's say in the Hungarian alphabet, we have uh, 44 letters and really? 14 vowels. Yeah, so, yeah. and the Hungarian pronunciation is really hard. Yeah. So, I, I just, I because I come from Denmark, we have three letters that's not in the English alphabet. And uh, this week, I bought a, a MacBook here in in in, in Budapest and uh, with a Hungarian keyboard. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's sort of a souvenir from from my time here. So you really want to torture yourself with yeah. Hungarian, and, and the and the Y and the Z is is the other way around on on, the, on this keyboard. Oh yeah, Y yeah. and the Z other yeah, way because around. You, because and because you we, use the Z, and we have those vowels as well. Yeah, yeah. The U A E letters. Yeah, we have the E U O, and they're normally where. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> so I'm getting used to it, and I can of course change uh, it to the Danish alphabet. Uh, but uh, but the the keyboard looks the way it looks. <laughs> so that's just a, a souvenir from here. No, we just been on this uh, amazing. Tr- how many? How, how long time? Two and a half, three two hours. Two and a half. With yeah, the questions. Yeah, with a three. free walking tour of uh, of, of Budapest and. Uh, you do several different... This was the general one. Yep. Can you tell me a little bit about what we've been through? So, what you attended was a general walk with a general overview about uh, everything here in Budapest. Mm. And yeah, we, we try to give a small taste. Of course, we cannot go into every topic really deeply within two and a half hours, no. but uh, a bit of everything. Yeah. So about history, yeah. architecture, what to eat, what to drink, the main sites on our way, uh, the panoramas, of course. Yeah, we, 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 we had to walk a lot of s- steps. So I was thinking... He's not a tour guide. He's a fitness instructor. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, I started to work here four years ago. And on the first summer, I lost 10 kilos with my really? job. You can imagine, during the summer, walking uphill every, nearly yeah, every yeah, day, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a good physical exercise. Excellent. So if you, if you want to lose some weight, <laughs> just be a tour guide here in Budapest. Because, okay, it's just a bump. It's only 60 meters tall, so it was not a big deal. No. I said it's a piece of cake. So yeah, yeah, it was no no big deal. But it's a beautiful city, and I've been here a little over a week now, and it's uh, I'm I'm really surprised of how fantastic and beautiful it is. You know, uh, if you are from the from the coast of a country, the ocean is not that special for you. So mm. I'm a tour guide from Budapest. For me, of course, I like my city. I I, I I'm in love with my city, but. It's not that special because I grew up here. That's yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but what I like in Budapest, uh, it has so many different faces. So in one street, you can feel uh, you are on the countryside. Uh, in the next street, or two, two streets away from there, you are in a metropolis. It has so many different faces. That's what I like. Yeah. So if I want to, mm, let's say, if, you are, if I want to find a quiet place, just... 
one stop with the metro and I'm yeah. in a forest. Yeah, 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 exactly. Going back to the alphabet thing and the language thing, because the Hungarian language is more related to the Finnish language. Oh, yeah. Our ancestors lived together back then, more than 1,000 years, years ago. It's not even a neighbor country. years ago. So after they went up, we went down. So the <laughs> Finnish was influenced by your language, for example. Oh, or Finnish no. and Danish is nowhere similar. No, no, no. no. But uh, there are different influences. Yeah. So right now we have, what I know, four similar words. Yeah. That's it. friend of mine, she started to learn Finnish. She said, no, there is no connection between the languages. The only the tonation and the sound of the language is similar. So I have some Finnish friends. And if they are speaking, if they are far enough from me, it sounds Hungarian. But if I go closer, I can realize, oh, no, it has nothing to no. do. So just like hand, blood, and water, these are the similar words. So in Hungarian, hand is keys. In Finnish, it's kezi. Blood is ver. In Finnish, veri. Uh, same with the water, viz, vezi. Something like this, that's it. And the Hungarian was influenced by the... Slavic languages around, uh, but it's uh, mm, Turkish because of the Turkish uh, occupation, by the German as well because of uh, Austria. So, yes, but everything is on Asian basis, and that's why it's really hard to learn Hungarian. Uh, what I wanted to say, the pronunciation is really hard because we pronounce every letter. So if you want to hear how we pronounce the letters, it's English with Hungarian pronunciation. Hov are yo. Guess. Hov are, Hov are yo. Hov are yo. What was it? How are you? Yeah, how are you? Uh, okay, okay. And, and, and I know that you have a very long word. Uh, it's megszentség teleníthetetlenséges kedéseitekért. And the correct translation is, uh, this is the result of the fact that you've been acting continuously in such ways that is impossible to desecrate you. <laughs> Another useful one. <laughs> and that's just one word. It's just one word. Yeah. So it's totally useless. We don't use it, but it's it's grammatically it's possible to create these long words. Let me just hear it again. Megszentség teleníthetetlenséges kedéseitekért. And the other one. El kell káposztás teleníthatatlanságos kedéseitekért. I won't even try to repeat that. Which has something to do with cabbage. Okay, but can you say hol kol meflő? Hol hol meflő. Ah, very close. <laughs> That's what I heard. <laughs> when I say rød grød med fløde, it's a Danish dessert and something we always try to make foreigners say because it's quite hard. Can you do it? Rød grød med fløde. <laughs> He knew how to say two beers, please, in Danish. To øl tak. The only thing what I know is to øl tak. Yeah, to öl tak. To, to öl tak, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I thought I'd impress him by saying cheers in Hungarian. I had a hard time learning it, but during the walking tour he said it was almost like I can shake a tree. I learned that one. I was trying to find out a way to remember it, but this whole I, I can shake yeah. a tree, that's a good way. Yeah. We have the short form, it's X. X. Like school. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and there is the 16 year old girly way. You can say eggy. Ah. <laughs> yeah, it's easier. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you plan to be a tour guide uh, for, a, for a long time or do you have other plans? Let's say personally. This is what I studied. Yeah. Uh, I studied tourism and economics. With my degree, I can work in a hotel, but uh, I hate offices. So until I am young enough to walk, until I have my voice, I can do this. Maybe one day if I will be older, uh, I don't know what I will do. But my dream is I want to open a car body shop because it's, oh, it's surprising. I, I'm a tour guide, but uh, I'm a car guy at the same time. Yeah. So I have my welder machine back yeah. home. I, I want to repair some cars yeah. but if I will be older one yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you will be older one day, <laughs> hopefully you will. Uh, hopefully, yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, it's been a pleasure. And um, I really enjoy my time here in Budapest. Okay, Pelle, please. I told you. It's Budapest. <laughs> Pest, Pest, Pest. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm at the railway station in Budapest. And I'm about to leave this wonderful place. I've had 
15 great days here in Budapest, the capital of Hungary, and I've really enjoyed myself. This is absolutely a city worth visiting. I'm about to get on a train and go to Bratislava and Slovakia. And I've never been to Slovakia before and I'm really looking forward to it. And for the first time I'm staying at a hostel. Yep, I'm staying at a hostel. So now I'm really a backpacker. If you've enjoyed listening to this podcast, please share it with your friends. You can also follow me on Twitter at The Radio Vagabond and on Instagram, Palabo. Both my Twitter and my Instagram is in English, and I also have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash Vagabond. And when I woke up this morning, I had the pleasant news that the Radio Vagabond podcast has been nominated for the Pre-Radio Award in Denmark as Podcast of the Year. I am so proud, so it's going to be a great day. My name is Pelle Philip, and I gotta keep moving. See ya.